Hi everyone, I just thought I would explain a little bit more about what happens with your proposals and your requests for ethical approval for your projects because uh, it's a little bit more complicated than you might have imagined and so I thought it would be helpful for you to know. So you know that you are completing a proposal which is also doubling as your first request for ethical approval for your project because all research needs ethical approval including yours. Uh, but the process is slightly different depending on what kind of project you're doing. So if you are doing research without any human participants or what people often call a desk-based study then you fill in the short version of the request for ethical approval and you add to that a two-page discussion of your uh, design and methodology uh, so that we get a bit more detail and also so that everyone is submitting roughly the same amount of work for their proposal. So uh, once we get the proposals in we'll allocate you a supervisor and uh, they will give you some feedback on your request for ethical approval. Now if you have a project without human participants then your supervisor can approve that request but more than likely uh, they'll ask you to make some amendments and send it back to them before they do give it their final approval because uh, most people, um, or hardly anyone gets the ethical approval right first time. Um, so you'll probably get some feedback, be asked to make some amendments and then submit it again to your supervisor, direct to them this time, email it to them, not through Turnitin. Uh, and uh, that will hopefully mean then that you get uh, ethical approval for your project. If you have human participants then the procedures are slightly different. You'll submit your proposal stroke request for ethical approval in the same way to begin with. Your supervisor will then review your request for ethical approval. They may ask you also to make some amendments and send it back to them. Um, and once they're satisfied with it, then they have to pass it on to someone else for a next level of scrutiny. So if you have a project which involves human participants, but they are not considered vulnerable, so that means they are not children, uh, or they are not uh, people with certain kinds of impairments, then your a uh, request for ethical approval has to go to someone called a departmental ethics lead or DEL. So the supervisor will scrutinise your application. Once they're satisfied with it, they'll send it on to a DEL and the DEL will make a decision about whether to approve it or not. And you can then expect some feedback uh, via the DEL, either that your project has been approved and you are free to go ahead, or that you need to make some further amendments and resubmit. So that's if you have uh, human participants who are not considered vulnerable, you need approval from a departmental ethics lead. And if you have the third kind of project, that is a project involving human participants who are considered vulnerable, so that is children, that's under 18, uh, or uh, people with certain kinds of uh, impairment like uh, learning difficulties for instance, then there is a third level of scrutiny. So again, your supervisor will first review your application. Uh, they may send it back to you for amendments. And then once they're satisfied with it, they will send it on to a departmental ethics lead. And once the departmental ethics lead is satisfied with it, uh, they then have to send it on to the faculty research ethics subcommittee. Uh, uh, who will then scrutinise your application at one of their meetings. So it's a three-stage process if you have vulnerable participants. And you will then get uh, feedback from the uh, committee about whether your application has been successful or not, and if so, whether you need to make any amendments. And once you get approval from the committee, then you are free to go ahead. Um, so the committee meets, uh, it's meeting at the beginning and the end of May. Um, so if you um, are intending to do a project that involves 
uh, children or vulnerable adults, then those are the deadlines that you need to meet. Uh, you need to, uh, the first meeting is on the uh, 2nd of May and there's another one towards the end of May, I think the 22nd of May. Um, so those are the deadlines that you're looking to meet if you need to go to the committee. So it's supervisor approval for uh, projects without human participants, DEL approval for projects with participants who are not considered vulnerable and committee approval for uh, projects with participants who might be or would be considered vulnerable. Uh, all of this, this procedure is explained on this flowchart uh, which I will add to Moodle so that you can uh, um, look at that at your leisure. So I advise you to familiarise yourselves with that. Uh, if you have any questions, then do please let me know.